think we're live right now. Let me just get this sense out to the people. Boom, 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 boom. should be plenty of people getting on right now just waiting for her to get on as well so bear with us um just give me a minute oh i forgot All right, so now we up and running. Thank you so much for coming through with this this evening, Cheryl. I appreciate it a lot. Thank Cause, you, Cash. This is awesome. Yeah, because yeah. you know how I was telling you before, it's a gigantic uphill battle that we're facing. Um, and women listen to women way more than they listen to us men and... I don't want nobody getting offended or anything because what's very well known amongst my demographic with these females, not to be disrespectful to the good ones, but the ones that go hardcore left. I am a nasty woman. So that's the challenge that we face over here. But yeah, you know, for those who don't know, the, those that will be tuning in now or watching this later, this is Cheryl Todd. I met her at the Second Amendment rally back in 2019 before this whole mass mandate uh, nonsense began to occur. Um, and what I love is being that in my demograph, we've lost a lot of our Second Amendment um, and out here women barely support it. Seeing a woman, especially a more mature woman where over here the mature women are like, hey, you shouldn't be talking about that. And I don't want my children hearing about that. Blah, blah, blah. Cheryl, on the other hand, is more like, no, get educated on firearms. It is your constitutional right. You have a basic common sense right to self-defense. You know, if somebody comes to attack you, you have to be well equipped to protect yourself. So when I heard you speak, like your tone of voice, because I... um. I was far away from the stage at that point. I was mingling amongst people. So I hear the female voice and the way you were articulating and explaining everything. I was just like, wow, thank you, God, because that's what we need. We need more women out here articulating that so like, that the females can relate to it on all type of different age demographics. And the way you put it so polite, so well explained, and so um appealing, I think anybody would just... <laughs> Be happy to hear it. So, you know, Cheryl, before I start, like, talking about, like, um, the the issue questions, like, what, what got you into firearms to begin with? Because from what I've heard, you've been here for a very long time. Um, and, you know, that whole stigma of, of firearms women being, like, these rough, butch rednecks, like, you completely destroy that. You debunk that, you know, uh, a great-looking woman who's very humble and um, at the same time very well-equipped and educated. So if you could let us know about that please oh this is so wonderful thank you again for asking me on and 
uh, for all those kind words. Holy cow, I will uh, do my best to live up to all of them. But so my journey into to firearms started with just being born into a household where they were just another tool. There was nothing mm. particularly special about the fact that there were guns in our household. Just like nobody has any, you know, special uh, stigma attached to a drawer full of sharp instruments in everyone's kitchen called your knife drawer, right? Yes, Nobody yes. gets freaked out about that. Nobody says, you have children in the home. How can you have a drawer full of sharp instruments? Nobody does that. Why? <laughs> because from the earliest age, we teach our children how to safely interact with that tool, right? My grandchildren, that is eye level to my grandchildren, that drawer full of deadly weapons, right? They open it up. They completely ignore the knives. They're not special. They're not like, ooh, we have a new knife in the house. You know, they reach in, they grab the spoon they were after, and off they go safely. Nobody's harmed. Nobody's shocked. Nobody's calling Child Protective Services. Mm. The, the only difference, the only difference is that we are taught it is normalized. We know how to interact with them. It's a specific tool for a specific reason. You can handle it carefully. You respect its power and you use it only for this and not for, you know, other things. We teach that with knives. If we taught it with guns, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, it would take so much hot air out of the, the craziness of the, you know, the drama around the conversation about guns. Why is there always drama with firearms when a woman of your, you know, upbringing is able to explain it so easily? Um, like, what, what, what do you think formulates that? Uh, I, again, I think it's just what is uh, taught to us when we're young, what is normal in our households. So I grew up in a household with a dad and three brothers and myself. Oh, and wow. my dad, yeah, my dad had guns literally everywhere. Like you'd open <laughs> a cabinet. It's like, oh, there's, there's another gun. You know, you go out to the, the shop where we'd work on the cars. Oh, there's some guns out there. And it was nothing. Um, the, it, my brothers and I never once said to our friend, hey, psst, come on, let me show you this gun. Let's take it out and do, you know, something dangerous with it. Because again, it was, that would have been the same as, hey, let's go take the, uh, you know, the, the, um, the thing you cut trees down with, the, the, I can't think of the name of it just all of a sudden. You know, it's, we would have never thought to do that. Uh, the chainsaw, we would have never thought to misuse the chainsaw because we knew what it was used for and what you don't use it for. Yeah. So, it was just that we were taught, my dad made sure that each of us understood the, the, to, the power of them, to respect them, and um, that's all there really is to it. it. It's so simple that it almost sounds silly, that it really <laughs> does come down to just education and familiarization. And one of the groups that I am amazingly blessed to be a part of is the DC Project, founded by Diana Muller. Mm -hmm. And her tagline is education, not legislation. And that really, I mean, that says it all right there. If people were taught what the tool was about, how to use it safely, then negligent discharges would maybe not evaporate completely, but they would come way down. Uh, children stumbling on a gun in a place that, you know, someone, you know, left it or lost it. There's stories that in dressing rooms and in restrooms, occasionally somebody will leave a gun behind. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, somebody that really, really should know better. But then if a child or someone that is unfamiliar with it comes across it, rather than it being a potentially dangerous situation, it's just like if there was a knife laying there. Oh, there's a knife laying there. Well, I'm not going to touch it, but I'm going to tell management. Management will know how to safely remove it. You know, it's so simple. It's just education. 
Education prevents indoctrination, and on top of that, any type of negligent discharges that could possibly occur. Wow, you're already getting love in here, Cheryl. So let's see, hottie with a pocket rocket. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for certain kids with mental concerns, parents need to lock up weapons. But for normal kids, like she said, normalize it and weapons safety rules. Absolutely. So, and there, there is always that exception, and it is up to the adult to uh, manage their household. You know, just like if a, ch a child has a special needs and maybe they don't know how to handle new knives correctly, well, maybe there needs to be a, you know, some kind of a latch or something on the knife drawer they need to be put in a different way. But this, this over-the-top stigma and drama that people try to attach to guns Truly, if you just if you just think your way through it, it's it's foolishness, and we are harming ourselves by trying to make them this mysterious thing. That kids, once it's mysterious, guess what? Now they, they really want curious. to know more. They're, yeah, they're going to touch it. They're going to show their friend. They're going to be you know needlessly impressed by it. You know, let's just deflate all of that and just make it another tool in the household. So stay out of your. And use the brain logic. Yes, I love it. Hey, when things are properly explained, um, if you uh, show somebody how to properly um, handle a microwave or the stove, accidents are way less likely to happen. Currently, right now, there's a, a huge por – well, I won't say huge portion, but there's a sufficient amount of households that do have uh, somebody who is – um, mentally challenged. I'm trying to, to be polite here and all that, but we don't really hear about these mentally challenged people going on stabbing sprees or anything. It's not like everybody instantly becomes Michael Myers or Jason. So I love how you put that together. And I have a, a female in here who was skeptical of firearms before that she even agreed with what you're saying as well. Proper education. Thank you so much for that mm -hmm. right there i i highly doubt anybody will have any rebuttal at that point unless again they happen to come and be in there and you know i'm 32 years old but my whole life all i've ever seen feelings do for the most part before anybody gets angry fail us cause us to make unrationable un uh un uh productive decisions more decisions mm -hmm. based on emotions that more than likely tend to lead to bad outcomes mm -hmm. so all right you grew up if i'm not mistaken phoenix arizona mm -hmm. so yes. phoenix arizona has a few big cities correct yeah so arizona we are uh among the actually the guns and ammo magazine every year does a top 10 best cities for your freedoms as far as guns go and uh arizona has um or is it states or cities i don't remember but i think it's states and arizona has hit number one for many years in a row and that is because people are very active out here working to push back on on bad laws that aren't going to keep anybody safe they're actually going to nope. endanger people in a lot of ways that some of these laws they want to push through and and help to write good laws to help keep us safer and more free. And mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, and we do have, I mean, every conceivable demographic you can imagine. We are a border state. So, you know, sometimes when there's, you know, they, in the news you'll hear border unrest or border issues or that sort of thing. We, we have that, right? We have, you know, the very, you know, pinky up, rich, hoity-toity areas of town. We have, you know, <laughs> the, the areas where people are, you know, really struggling, you know, the really uh, blue collar. Uh, and we have every, every problem and every blessing that you would find in any other state. And yet we have traditionally had very low crime and a few years ago when we fought for the right to have what we call constitutional carry, which, mm -hmm. is, which is concealed carry without having to ask permission of the government for a license, right? Uh, of course, the, the headlines were, oh, there's going to be blood in the streets and it's going to be like the OK Corral. People are going to be like, 
you know, doing the, you know, duel at sunrise every single day. And mm -hmm. actually what they found out is gun crime, overall violent crime came down. Because there is something to that old adage. There's an adage that says an armed society is a polite society. Because if you can't identify, if you don't know who's carrying, then you tend to be a little bit, you know, nicer, a little kinder. More polite. I love it. Polite. Yes. <laughs> we earned the Don DeMarco on that. The hood is going to love this. Oh, man. Um. <laughs> Somebody commented here also, uneducated households make any blunt weapon hazardous. Exactly. So we try to demonize the tool that actually got us the freedoms that we have today. You'll laugh to hear this. Um, the rapper DMX, he had moved out of here, out of New York City to Arizona simply because, um, and there's an interview, is on YouTube for anybody who wants to fact check me. Um, he has, I think, two or three felonies, and Arizona still permits him to exercise the Second Amendment. Oh, so wow. that's pretty dope. Yeah, like yeah. he said that, you know, that that was one of the reasons he moved out to Arizona. And um, along with wanting to get away, because the thing is over here, it is arguably the biggest city uh, in the United States. But when you're here and you know your way around is very small, word gets around quick. So. I know there was a lot of things going on within his world and certain people he just needed a break from. So mm -hmm. that's another reason he moved. But he said, yo, another great thing about Arizona, I'm going to find that clip and I'm going to post it before yeah. anybody comes around again and happens to get all up in there. Because believe me, he said, he's like, that's another reason I moved to Arizona. Because yo, over there, I got two or three felonies and they said I could carry. You know how he talks and shit. Interesting. Well, I would yeah. like to know more about that. Because, you know, uh, there, there is a way to get your record expunged. And maybe he was able to do that. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I, don't, I don't know how, how he did that. But, yeah, um, when I heard that, I was just going bonkers. I'm like, what? Yeah. I mean, we have a gun shop. And, you know, one of the questions on the federal form 4473 is you know about uh any past record so um I, that i would i'd be interested how that that came about but you know what good for him if he was able to you know get some something that happened when he was a young person or whatever expunged and then able to restore and reclaim his second amendment rights because that is the second amendment has been pulled into this horrible political realm and it's being used as a political football from the left and the right. It, this is not just a, you know, one side is all the demon here, right? Mm -hmm. to, to try to, you know, muck up our Second Amendment and our Bill of Rights. There, is, uh, there are people on, on both sides of the, the major uh, parties that have used the Second Amendment just for their own gain, just for a, a political platform. And it's, it's wrong because it leaves the citizens caught in the middle, maybe even afraid to even discuss it, right, in mm -hmm. polite society, when it was part of our, our Constitution, part of our Bill of Rights, which is for everyone. And the Bill of Rights that was added to the Constitution, those amendments, that was the firewall. That was mm -hmm. where the government said, okay, on this side of the Bill of Rights, is where individual liberties and individual rights exist and the government can't even can't even stick a toe over the line. No, that's not for you. That is for the citizens. That's for we the people. And we have in laziness, in our feelings, right? In our emotions allowed holes to be poked in it and you know, it started to get it eroded away and and chunks taken off of it to where you know, I don't think our founders would really recognize our our document, the, the, who we are, if this is our playbook, right? Is this our recipe book? Then I don't even know what we're cooking anymore. Exactly. They would not be happy to come about right now. Uh, Tony Simon said this on our Instagram live the other night. They I saw the Tony. danger... Yeah, I love Tony too. He helps so much. I bring so many people to Diversity Shoe. 
And they see again how I said we're trying to break this stigma of uh, prejudice and stereotypes. So he says, "Hey, look, I'm I'm one of ya, black and brown, and um, you're welcome here. Nobody's gonna judge you." And also, Anthony Calandro shout him out as well because um, he's very welcoming and he tries to engage with everybody regardless of skin tone, ethnicity, etc. Um, nothing stands without a foundation. A company doesn't stand, a building doesn't stand. Us ourselves, I think our, our foundation would be like our legs and all that. Mm -hmm. um, or even if you want to get like super technical, our foundation would be our hearts and our brains that keep us going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anything without a foundation will not uh, survive, period. The Constitution of the United States is the, f the foundation and the supreme law of the land. So many people exercise their First Amendment, whether they want to be in their feelings or they want to be more on the rational, intellectual side, even though you can still be emotional and intellectual. But when you don't leverage it properly, one takes over the other and it goes to, to, to shits. Um, so... Yeah, how you said, if these guys came about today, I always say this, I, I think they'd be slapping the shit out of all of us. Like, what the hell? Like, we left this here for a reason, and it was clearly written in that amendment shall not be infringed. You're not allowed to say what you want to say or have a right to privacy if you cannot defend it. Oh, exactly. And just as you said, you know, the shall not be infringed, that clause, the only place that clause exists in the entire document our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, the only place is in the Second Amendment. And mm. so I think it's sort of like gun rights for dummies. They're, they're like, okay, how do we make sure they don't screw this? Up? Let's see. Um, how about, yeah, just shall not be infringed. Like, so mm -hmm. somebody can't go, well, what if, and they're like, no, 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 shall not be infringed. Well, how mm -hmm. about, no, 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 shall not be infringed, right? Shall not it's, be touched. <laughs> shall not be touched. And, you know, th whenever I hear one of these politicians and we just now I'm saying we the larger we not we like me and my family but the larger yeah. we here here in Arizona just elected Mark Kelly and uh, as a senator and he is one of these politicians who always goes no I'm a gun guy I'm I'm like you right I was raised with guns I like guns and then here comes the kicker but Oh, he's right? a compromiser. Mm -hmm. He's a compromiser. We hate those. So he's... <laughs> so, yeah, he's like, I'm for the Second Amendment, but... And I wrote a, a blog a few years ago called Don't Be a Butt About Gun Rights. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just exactly that. The minute somebody says, but, like, what if, what if it was like, I, your, your, your significant other says to you, I love you, but... Right? Once that book like, comes in, and nothing oh yeah. good after that. <laughs> no, and everything they just said before is like gone, out the yeah, window. Nullified, so. null and void. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for articulating that as well. Because again, our biggest issue out here is the females, um, simply because they're very... um. Like, they talk all this, you know, girl power stuff and all that and heavy belief that they could do anything. But when we bring about the opportunity to empower themselves even more outside of hatred, this is what we get. <laughs> Holy shit. So Crickets. Back in 2014, 2015, unfortunately, and God bless these girls' souls, we have a we each borough has a gigantic park. Manhattan has Central Park. Uh, the Bronx has um it, it is between Van Cortland and this other park. I forgot the name, but it is between those two duking it out. So in Queens, the biggest park is Flushing Meadow Park, is near Shea Stadium, well now called City Field. Before anybody gets in their feelings, where the Mets play. Um, back in 2014, 2015, girls during that, those two summers, they were going out jogging and they kept getting, uh, assaulted. Um, oh it could have been gang members. It could have been, uh, uh, a few sick individuals. Cause here in New York city, we have five super gangs, some of which are good people, but when, when the crime comes in, it's just like if a bunch of libertarians or, or Republicans or Democrats start 
carrying out crimes or, you know, for the few good people in Antifa who go by definition of anti-fascism or the few good people in Black Lives Matter who are sticking to the, the actual justice part of it, being cordial about it. When the bad individuals um, make massive action, everybody's held accountable. So, um, like I said, it could be gangs and that. I don't remember what ended up becoming of the story because, again, all they did was maximize on the fear factor of it and have everybody running around here like like a, a bunch of, you know, scared children and all that. These girls were getting assaulted. And I always told the females here that I know, had these women been armed, they would have been able to defend themselves a lot more because along with being armed, you have to raise your, your, your physical and mental awareness. Like you're more aware of where you are and you're more, um, you're more aware also that if you do have to reach for your firearm, finger off the trigger at all times, you don't want a negligent discharge. So you take more self-ownership, your alertness rises, you're more on point. The rebuttal that I got that hopefully you can answer this because, again, the women, they don't want to hear it from a man. They hear it from men. It's mansplaining, and we get the... I am a nasty woman. So I don't think they could pull that off with another female. So what do you tell these females that even when, when you present to them these circumstances of danger that can occur and have occurred and they still rebuttal you on being, well, I don't think I need to be armed to avoid all that, Cheryl. How do you respond to them? Because that's the issue I face a lot here. Absolutely. Well, first of all, if I am for individual liberties and individual rights, then I'm for each individual person choosing for themselves. And so I would never push that off onto anyone. I would never shame someone who didn't, you know, agree with me about, you know, owning, carrying, possessing firearms. But I, I would say that when you get in the car, I, maybe not everyone does this. Everyone I know does this. We put our seatbelts on. Oh, we yeah. don't put our seatbelts on just when we think that we're going to drive recklessly and crash into other people. We do it every single time because we don't know what's going to happen, right? We have uh, fire extinguishers in our home, not just during times that we think that, you know, well, it's Christmas time. We got a Christmas tree. Sometimes I catch on fire. So maybe I better get a, a fire extinguisher. No, we have them all the time because, <laughs> because we don't know if and when the house is going to catch on fire. Um, so simple so common sense. Right. Firearms to me are just part of that preparedness. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we keep cans of soup in the cabinet that they've probably been there for many, many years, you know, just just in case we end up with, you know, I'm sitting here in the, the desert area, so we don't have blizzards here. But in your area, you probably have, you know, times of blizzards. Somebody listening across the nation ends up in a situation where, you know, you need that extra bread, that extra bottle of water, that extra can of soup, whatever the case may be. To me, it's the same thing. It's that preparedness for the unknown. And it is that that idea that, you know, the, the first responders, we, we talk about our police um, as our first responders. I love the police. We have many, many friends who are police officers. M most of them are good people with their hearts in the right place, trying to do a good job. But the thing is, if I have an emergency, they are not omniscient. They can't go, oh, do 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 Cheryl Todd is having an emergency at the corner of 12th and Main, and I must, you know, flash, f flash there like I'm Superman. It takes time for them to get there. I am there. You know who's there in an emergency? I am. So I am my own first responder. And I train. <laughs> yes, continue. And I, I Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say right there that that was, that was just like taking a rook and a bishop at the same time. Like, <laughs> but yes, I train because I want to keep myself safe. Because if I am in a situation that I am not safe, then I am no good to my family. I am no mm -hmm. good to keep my daughter safe, to keep my grandchildren safe. So for me, it's just a matter of personal responsibility. And... Mm -hmm. um, it really does come down to that. And, you mm -hmm. know, you can get training. You mentioned um, uh, Calandro. Uh, he, I know he has excellent training at, at his mm -hmm. facility. It's clean. 
It's beautiful. I interviewed him on my show, Gun Freedom Radio, and I think he even talked about how beautiful his bathrooms were because he yeah. understands, right? He understands how, you know, we feel when we go into an unfamiliar place. If we've never been in a shooting uh, lane before, an indoor shooting range before, uh, everything is going to feel weird and strange. And he has taken the time and the care to, to make it as welcoming and as familiar and as comfortable as possible. And there are ranges all over the nation like that. There are gun stores all over the nation like that that understand that for a lot of people, this is a huge purchase. That first time purchase, we had eight and a half million people uh, at least this past year who have taken that huge step. And I honor every one of them because many of them that came in our gun shop, AZ Firearms, it wasn't like they said, oh, I always knew I was going to get a gun. It's just a matter of when. There was many of them that felt like I am totally in shock that I'm taking, like I'm going to be a gun owner, right? Mm -hmm. And, and that's a, <laughs> that was an honor for us to be able to interact with them and bring them along in this journey and answer all of their questions, connect them with trainers. And, you know... It, Here's some statistics that I want to share, you know, because you asked me to, to talk to the to the ladies. Yes, um, please. We never we never hear these statistics. We hear about gun violence. We hear about, you know, how many people are harmed in, you know, with with firearms every year. We never hear that every single year, every 12 months, two and a half million times lives were saved because there was a responsibly armed citizen on the scene. Oh my goodness, hold on. Because I don't want to lose a moment here, but <laughs> you brought the stats right into it. Yeah, I got because... another one for you that's specifically okay, please. for women. Uh, 200,000 times every year, a woman prevents a sexual assault. Why? Because she was a responsibly armed citizen. Oh my God, Cheryl! Two hundred thousand times a year. You, you're killing it right now. It's just like you're at the three-point line and not missing. <laughs> oh my goodness, amazing! Yeah, because honestly, like again, the rebuttal I face out here is crazy. The females say they don't even trust themselves, and this is like in the midst of you talking all this girl power, self-ownership, you don't need a man or nothing, and you're very capable of doing things yourself. The minute we mention firearms, and this is like, come on, like that, that fear factor should be removed, and that Absolutely. empowers you every more. You really want to talk real feminism. Real feminism is taking full-blown self-ownership and knowing that you're going to have the means to survive without any type of assistance. I know you're a pro cop. Um, I am not. But what I, I do love that you, Thank you. And I understand your side as well. But what I do love what you said was, regardless of the fact, they can be titled first responders along with our medics, our firefighters, etc. But in reality... We're our own first responders because you're there in the moment. These guys don't pull a Goku and just teleport and all that are instantly there to protect you. You know, and especially for these girls over here who claim to be feminists. Guess what, ladies? You're claiming that you don't need men, but then you're out here calling the cops. So isn't that a bit, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, hypocritical? Mm -hmm. So you can't be a hypocrite um, saying... Oh, I want a lasagna, and then the, the second you get a lasagna, I don't want it anymore. You can't say, hey, I don't need no man, blah, blah, blah. And then the minute something pops up, oh, my God, what are we going to do? You know, yeah. it, it's insanity. Um, so those stats right there, they're definitely going to help a lot because, again, with the ladies, when they hear it from another woman, it's not mansplaining, it's not, uh, oh, so-called fabrication. And especially a woman with your, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? credentials, your history, your resume. Um, you guys own your own uh, firearms shop, correct? You said we AZ do. Firearms. Mm -hmm. Amazing, you know, congratulations right there. That off the rip earns a Don DeMarco. Here you go. Don DeMarco. Joe Biden's <laughs> trying to delay my sounds. <laughs> um, so that right there shows that 
Any female who puts her heart, her will, and effort into whatever she wants to do, she can accomplish it with or without anybody else's help, and she will succeed without anybody else's help or with somebody else's help. You need to vote red. Not here in New York. I apologize about that, but realistically speaking, the females out here, they do not want to hear that. Oh, my God. That is a super hell no. Uh, it's going to have to be libertarian on this side. Sorry, folks, but um, New York City is not going to go Republican. The Republicans out here, they ran a candidate back in 2018, Mark Molinaro, not to go into it too much, but so-called Republican, pro-red flag laws, pro-raising taxes on firearms purchases, full-blown rhino. And at this point, what, what I've seen with the Republican Party, no thanks, I'm a porcupine. Um, but we always tend to be considered like, oh, as libertarians, you guys are just Republicans who uh, embrace uh, marijuana and are pro-decriminalization. It's more to it than that. We're pro-small government. We're pro-little to no taxes. And we are pro-community because that's one thing Republicans are big on, which corresponds into the church, the foundation of this nation. A lot of meetings to, 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 to um, organize for the revolution were held in churches along with bars. Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Brothels, etc. <laughs> so right there, we're able to align with them. Where we align with the left is uh, self-individuality and, and liberation, um, mm -hmm. self-choice, and mm -hmm. um, the, the engagement in anything that would be considered taboo mm -hmm. is on you. You know, you want to get an abortion, all right, fine. That is between you and the almighty above. Um, I can't say that I'm fully pro or anti because I'm about uh, self-responsibility. As a 32-year-old man going on 33, I've never gotten a female pregnant, and I don't think I'm better than anybody. So, you know, if you're able to go about things in a responsible manner, you don't have to take it to that extreme. But as a libertarian, I do say you should have the option and accessibility. The issue we face here with the Republicans out here, they're, um, they're pretty much what Democrats used to be. Um, mm. And it, it won't be too long before they go, you know, heavy uh, infringing left themselves because ironically enough out here the left is starting to become more pro-gun bit by bit i do have a friend who i know i'll keep his name anonymous because um a, a lot of situations occurred but he's actually more pro second amendment now and um his girl um is, is an attractive woman as well and how i was able to explain that to him was what happens when she's on the subway because you know here we have subways what happens when she's on the subways at night because this used to happen a lot in the 90s and early 2000s and even the 80s. But the 90s just took it through the roof. A lot of subway slashings. Ooh, um, yeah. Yeah, so it's just like, look, they took the, 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 the firearm out of it. And still brutality was occurring, yes. harming innocent life. Mm -hmm. um, so I explained that to him. And that's what made him become more pro-Second Amendment and his girl as well, because her being, you know, on the left side is just like, what's the alternative to firearms? And I say there is none. We, we cannot shoot Hadoukens or Kamehamehas out of our bodies yet until somehow we manage to unlock it. But even then, it's still a projectile. So you got to yeah. have the means to, to defend yourself regardless. Um, what would you tell the females who decide to carry but they tell me oh i'm scared that if i put it in a purse or a holster i'm gonna you know negligent discharge i'm gonna fire on myself accidentally how do i prevent against that that's another rebuttal i got so take it away cheryl just like anything you get good at you gotta practice train train mm. train and then train some more it is a uh ownership of a firearm is a responsibility you know you get a dog well there's a whole new set of responsibilities you get a cat there's a set of responsibilities firearm you know you've got to train and know where you're carrying it you've got to be able to access it safely um and and effectively if you were to need to use it because that's the whole reason you're carrying it right yep mm -hmm. um and uh, i'm going to show my my little patch here my little uh polka dots are my camo 
that <laughs> came about because uh, it's kind of like how I dress, right? A very, I'm like the Betty Crocker of, of the gun world, uh, very <laughs> feminine. Um, and so mm -hmm. I can dress just like this and I don't necessarily have the AR-15. I, I don't open carry any gun. I always conceal carry. Um, mm -hmm. But I can conceal a firearm dressed like this. I can get to it safely. I, it would be inaccessible to uh, my grandchildren who are always, you know, skittering about and that sort of thing. So it's just really about training, getting the right kind of, of conceal carry uh, gear, right? Mm -hmm. And when you say gear, it doesn't mean, oh, now we're going to go all tactical. That's because my <laughs> camouflage are polka dots. You know, you don't have to do the whole, you know, looking like you're going out in the, the woods somewhere. Um, <laughs> And, you know, there, there is a holster for every situation. So um, the main thing that you would have to know besides training is there are places that you can get in legal trouble uh, for carrying. So you would have to know, well, where can I have it and where can I not have it? Especially in a, a city like, you know, New York, there's probably more uh, gun-free zones. I always have to do that in air quotes because they're only gun-free until somebody brings a gun into it. And so, um, you know, I... <laughs> there goes the gun free. <laughs> yes, I'm telling you. So, yeah, I mean, I used to carry off body, strictly off body, which means I carried it in my purse. And then when my daughter uh, gave birth to my first grandchild, uh, she's six now, my granddaughter's six. Uh, God at bless. First it... Thank you. It's, oh, it's the best time of your life ever. Mm -hmm. um, being a grandparent. So uh, at first it didn't really change anything because, you know, it's a tiny little infant, you know, it's not, you know, climbing around and exploring. But as soon as she got to that age, you know, uh, I realized, okay, the off body is just not as safe. I don't feel as comfortable just even hanging my purse up. I was locking it in the safe every night. And that was just a little bit more cumbersome. So I, I decided I would figure out, I would train and learn how to carry it on my body, but concealed. And so I carry, uh, I work from home a lot, especially this year. I, I leave the house very rarely <laughs> because of COVID. But Duh. when I do, um, it's, I mean, why, why would I have a tool of self-defense if I don't take it with me? So pretty much if I'm out of the house, I have a firearm concealed on me somewhere. Amazing. So, all right. Are you near um, Phoenix by any chance? Because I, I believe I am. Mm -hmm. I'm about a half a, half an hour west of Phoenix. Um, our store is in Avondale, Arizona, and so Avondale, Goodyear, Litchfield. We're near Luke Air Force Base. If any of that's ringing a bell for anybody, mm. it probably won't. But basically, the comparison I want to make here: it's a big city, Phoenix. Um, yes, I've watched like videos on the internet and all that, there was an event, I've been in several network marketing companies, so there was gonna be an event on, out in Phoenix. So I like having prior knowledge to anything, again, just like a firearm. Get well-trained first, remove any type of anxiety or skepticism or you know blatant fear that you might have of it. Phoenix has tall buildings. Mm -hmm. That's the issue we face over here that right away the people come around, well, you know, we have all these skyscrapers and all that, so how are you gonna have people carrying firearms and you know within these buildings anything can happen the whole <laughs> fear factor i hate it um that's a big rebuttal as well so phoenix having tall buildings and people still carrying in phoenix has that caused any issues i this is i'm not even sure why tall buildings is an issue i've never heard a single thing Ever like why would why would being high up in a building be a problem for having a firearm? That's the rebuttal we get here heavily because people are stacked on top of each other. They worried about um negligent discharges or um oh you're in a building with so many people. What if somebody just happens to lose it? What I tell them is right now who has the firearms realistically outside of the law abiding uh. Even though all gun control is racist before a libertarian jumps in here. Hey, Cash, you didn't acknowledge that. You're not a real libertarian. Um, so 
regardless of whatever, the people outside of the law-abiding citizens who from here, you can only carry to the range and back. If you make a stop or anything, you're instantly a felon. Um, it's the criminals and um, the infringement enforcers slash police. These criminals will go inside any building. Tupac got shot in the building, you know? And, and it's just like, well, what prevented the guy from shooting uh, Tupac in the building here in New York City? God bless him. It's not in a disrespectful manner. It's providing an example. What gun control law prevented that? Now, again, me being a male and being uh, heavily outnumbered with the majority of women out here voting left, infringement, supportive, borderline Marxist, what would you as a woman tell your fellow female um, peers, hey, the, the, the tall buildings don't make a difference. Like, how would you further elaborate on that, like that they can fully absorb it? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I hadn't, because it's not a problem, because I've never heard that before, uh, and I own a firearm store, and I, I have a gun freedom radio show. We talk to people all over the nation all the time, and I've never once heard that as a concern. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the ammunition that you choose is very important. You know, we do talk to people about ammunition, just even in, in sub homes in the suburbs, you, you don't want, uh, you don't want the ammunition, the projectile that comes out of the end of the gun to go through three sheets of sheetrock, you know, through, you know, several rooms of your house, you you could end up, you know, harming the exact family member that you're trying to save. So you want to choose ammunition that, that stops on impact. And so I would think that that would probably be the um, the most See important it. issue for uh, anybody that that is in any situation. We have a lot of uh, homes out here that are manufactured homes. You'd call them, you know, like a, a, a trailer, a trailer park. And, mm -hmm. you know, same thing. I mean, these flimsy walls, I guess you could have a problem where somebody, you know, bullet just keeps on going. But if you choose the right ammunition for your home for your surroundings for your situation that's going to mitigate a lot of this problem simple common sense again and from a woman's mouth <laughs> so all right the word i was waiting for was the ammunition would be hollow points well the there safer. are different co th yes and and that's the direction that you would want to go when you have a, a, a fire, I mean, and they want to attach these scary names to them, right? They call them cop mm. killing bullets. Yup, I was going to say that. Thank you. Yeah. And, and the, it, the minute somebody tries to attach a scary name to something, that right there, if you're a freedom-minded person, that right there should make you go, okay, why are they trying to keep me away from this? I'm going to do my mm -hmm. own research. There's something about this that could probably actually benefit me, but they're trying to scare me away from it. And uh, so, yeah, if you get something that you're trying to stop the bad guy and, and you get that over penetration, that projectile goes right through them and then right through the wall. It might it might strike your child that that you're trying to save. So the ammunition is as important as the tool itself, the firearm, as the training is so that you are pointing the firearm in as safe a direction as possible. I mean, I, I do understand, like, if you're stacked on top of each other, well, what's a safe direction? Well, there are, um, you know, clearing, you can get a, a, a like, what you'd put a, a potted plant in, fill it full of sand, that's a clearing station, you know, a place that you can point that firearm and, and keep it from, to go, if there were a negligent discharge, keep the projectile from going in the wrong place. Lots of things that trainers will teach you. I'm not a trainer. So go to a trainer, do your own research. It's, it's worth it because mm -hmm. it could save your life. What is more precious? What is more valuable than your one and only God given life? Why wouldn't you be as prepared as, as you could possibly be to defend it? Because again, if you defending your life could help you defend your child or your significant other, um, so it's it's too important to just cast away with that emotional, well, you know, guns are bad and people that own guns are bad. Really? 
It, why, mm -hmm. why is that? Who told you that? And why would they tell yeah. you that? Yeah, what oh, about the two God. and a half million times that guns were involved in preserving life? And the 200,000 times a year they were used to prevent a woman from being sexually assaulted. How, how does that play into that scenario? It doesn't. Thank you. Yes. Perfect. Because again, our biggest challenge out here is women. Right now, we have an amazing candidate who's going to run for mayor because de Blasio has turned out. Her name is Stacey Pressman, a left-leaning libertarian who can, you know, heavily uh, relate to the emotional side of things, but also pro-Second Amendment. And what she says over here, like, all right, being that is a city and things won't happen overnight, she advocates for bringing... Um, firearm safety courses back into school curriculum thank you yes thank you oh i gotta yes. thank you from cheryl i gotta give myself <laughs> a don demarco right there that's a badge of honor don DeMarco. um and along with that that before getting your firearm even though yes again libertarians all you know all gun laws are an infringement but just passing the course the safety course very simple well, somebody asked me a question here do you live in a bad part of new york or suburbs it is bad all over simply because um unfortunately my fellow new yorkers here are very short-tempered um i do blame a lot of it on hip-hop um that has given us this, this um this this inner personality of frustration rage and just lash out on people uh, after like the Run DMC, like the early 80s hip hop that was more like educational and dance to music, it became very hostile. That's been embedded in a lot of us. So out here, danger presents itself everywhere. The last fight I got into, my friends and I, was a, a, a bar fight in the suburbs. So <laughs> danger is, is everywhere over here. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, so we already touched on, you know, breaking the stigma, how the, the Second Amendment is a tool that does empower women and it makes them very less likely to rely on, on men, especially out here. You know, I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. Anna is here. This is the first Anna. This is for you. She's the first female who took the time out here to actually listen to me. Um, just like me, semi-Trump supporters, and that's something I did like about you when I was advocating more for Joe Jorgensen simply because Trump failed us on national concealed carry reciprocity 2017 to the 2018. He could have told Mitch McConnell, look, it passed the House. Can you please put it up for a vote? Get it to my desk so I can sign off on it. That's why I let him go at Um. But you were very polite to me about that. She's very similar to you, very open-minded and understanding. Because a lot of the women here, and she could advocate for this as well, short-tempered again, you know, I'm a nasty woman and you're not going to talk to me, blah, 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 and all that. And then, you know, they wonder why they're being left behind. A lot of these girls are just out here saying, What happened? Where did all the men go? Because a lot of New York guys, what we do, we, we branch out to other states and all that for the most part, to find females. You got a heavy ton of New Yorkers, Florida, Pennsylvania, uh, more more states where it's a little less uh, fast-paced. And um, they seek love out there. And it's unfortunate, it's simply um, attitude adjustment. Like I said, when I first heard you talk, I said, wow, listen to her tone. You could hear the compassion in her voice and all that. Very humble, very um, welcoming. It, 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 when you were talking, it felt like smelling a uh, warm, homemade sweet potato pie, you know, <laughs> Ra <laughs> rather than that, that. Ever. Thank you rather than, that. you know, that, you're welcome. That, that cold cut deli sandwich. So this is like, oh, I'm going to just eat this because I'm hungry and all that. Um, so... I think we've pretty much touched on everything. Um, and you could heavily advocate that females, more than anything, seeking true empowerment to seek to be more in favor of the Second Amendment. Like you can put a stamp on that, correct? Without forcefully, but just saying, hey, that is the route to go, right? Absolutely. Why would we, why would we give up any right that we have? Why would we put ourselves in a position to have to ask permission of any government body, any other human being, when it comes to something as vital as protecting our own lives and the lives of our family. So you don't even have to be a gun owner. You don't even have to think you're ever going to own a gun in your life, and you can still support and protect 
our Bill of Rights and our Second Amendment because it's our inheritance. This was given yep. to us freely. And if we treat it like, you know, you can look at free and say, okay, it's worthless, right? There's no worth because it's free. Or you can look at free and say, it's, it's priceless. You can't mm -hmm. put a price on it. That's our Constitution, our Bill of Rights. And if, if I have just a minute, I wanted to draw a yep, line. We got, we got but, five minutes left. Uh -huh. Okay. The 100 years ago, we just passed the 100th anniversary of passing the 19th Amendment, which is women's suffrage. Well, what's women's suffrage? That was our permission slip to be ev even be able to walk into a voting booth and vote. Do you know that 100 years ago, a woman like myself could not legally vote something that simple something that basic we weren't allowed to do it i hate that word allowed right mm -hmm. and so for the last hundred years we have had that privilege that right it's a right and we've been able to do it and during that time how many women have voted to to push back the ability to exercise our second amendment right why would you use the right that you had to fight for? Women had to, I mean, they, had, they went to jail over this, trying to gain the right to vote. They lost mm -hmm. friends and family. They were the rabble rousers of their day. It was so, mm -hmm. you know, radical to think that you would want to go vote. We finally got it. And now we use that power to vote away our Second Amendment rights. We use one amendment to vote away another amendment. What is wrong with us? Why would that we ever, ever sense. do that? What was that? <laughs> that does not make sense. That's some Johnny does, Cochran from South does, Park. <laughs> that's right. It does not make sense. Stop doing it. If you're one of those women, you can't undo a vote you did before, but you can definitely vote better the next time. Exactly. And I'll be watching. I'll be looking. I'll be asking you. Did you yeah, yeah. use your 19th Amendment to support your Second Amendment? If you did, then thank you. High five <laughs> to you. I honor you. For real. So we got about two minutes left on this. I just want to let the ladies know, you know, you're hearing it here from a woman who wears dresses, who's very feminine, but at the same time doesn't carry herself as a damsel in distress rather no. than a, da a damsel Ew. who's ready for any type of situation that should occur. Um, no hatred towards men, but at the same time empowering the women, informing with both stats and historical facts as well. Um, a lot of people from Hispanic countries, I'm of Puerto Rican descent, so a lot of people from, from my fellow Hispanic countries, they come to the United States simply off the basis of uh, the First Amendment. Because if you go to like Ecuador or Brazil and you speak out against the government, they come in to arrest you, Cuba, um, with the exception of Puerto Rico. But even in Puerto Rico, like things could get crazy. So I just want the ladies to know, don't, don't, don't um, try to stomp on what your parents brought you here, or why you came here, your first uh, generation coming in. Um, to, to, to reduce yourself from being able to defend yourself because we just want your safety and you're seeing that there are women in the Second Amendment community who are not, you know, butch or, you know, sexually orientated in the non-heterosexual direction who do advocate for this, who are still feminine, wear dresses, but say you could do it too. Um, Cheryl, for real, like I admire you so much simply because you are what I say a role model should be for all women. And I'm not just saying that because you're here, because I do share you a lot to the females. Okay. And you saw a few me, a few of the females did jump in here tonight, and there's going to be a few more females who are going to watch this. I'm going to show the girls at my job and all that. Um, once these capacity restrictions open up, uh, we're going to be bringing more females to diversity shoe. I capped last time six or seven females. I can't wait till the day is 40 or 50 females. And with the advancement of technology, which we're using now to exercise our First Amendment, we can help educate those on our Second Amendment as well. Um, Cheryl, you're amazing. Um, I thank God, because I wasn't going to go to the Second Amendment rally, being that I found out last minute, but I was able to find somebody to search with me, thank God. And I believe things don't happen without a reason. I do believe in destiny and all that. 
So just me hearing you talk that time, I was just so captivated. I was like, I got to find out who this woman is and hopefully her and I could build a, a, a relationship in order to help spread awareness. Cheryl, thank you so much for this evening. This video is going up on the YouTube channel and it's going to awaken a lot of females. And I know the ones this evening, they were giving you compliments, smiles and all that. So thank you. Thank you so much, Cash. This was so much fun and such an honor for me. And I do, I do think God's hand was over that rally and the people that I met, including yourself. And uh, to, to culminate